man by his nature is very much inclined to that which is impressive in size and quantity over things that are lesser. Similarly, man by his nature is inclined to the immediate, to the ajil, over the ajil, that which is delayed. Man by his nature is hasty, Allah said, to prefer the glamorous and to prefer the popular and to prefer the huge in quantity and to prefer what is immediate. Now, we have the tendency to make decisions that we later regret in this world and in the one to come. And so to help us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us some tools to help us manage our thoughts, to make the correct decisions. And this is an ayah from Surah Al-Ma'idah, chapter 5 of the Quran, ayah 100, where Allah Jalla Jalaluhu said, قُلْ لَا يَسْتَوِي الْخَبِيثُ وَالطَّيِّبُ Say to the people, the khabith, the impure, and the pure, they are not equal. وَلَوْ أَعْجَبَكَ كَثْرَةُ الْخَبِيثُ Even if you are impressed by the size of the impure. فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ يَا أُولِي الْأَلْبَابِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ So be mindful of Allah, O people of intelligence, so that you may be successful. The principle says, the khabith, the impure and pure, they're not the same, though we may be impressed by the size of the impure and the opportunity that it brings with it. I'm going to give you four examples, four lines of comparison. Line of comparison number one, comparing the life of a Muslim who pursues the hereafter and the rida, the pleasure of Allah Jalla Jalaluhu and has made this his objective against the one who cares not for any of this and lives life blind. Are they the same? Allah says, Is the one who knows that what has been delivered to you, O Prophet وسلم, is the truth? Like the one who is blind, are they the same? Allah said. Allah asked, هَلْ يَسْتَوِي الْأَعْمَى وَالْبَصِيرِ Is the blind similar to the one who can see? أَمْ هَلْ تَسْتَوِي الظُّلُمَاتُ وَالنُّورِ Are the darknesses like the light? They are not the same. هَلْ يَسْتَوِي الَّذِينَ يَعْلَمُونَ وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ Are the ones who know like the ones who don't know? They are not the same. Look at the words of our Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he would begin his night prayer. Words of confidence, belief in Allah, yaqeen, certainty, no confusion. He would say, وَلَكَ الْحَمْدُ أَنْتَ الْحَقِّ Praise be to you, O oh Allah, you are the truth. وَقَوْلُكَ حَقِّ Your speech is the truth. وَلِقَاؤُكَ حَقِّ Meeting you is the truth. وَالْجَنَّةُ حَقِّ Paradise is true. وَالنَّارُ حَقِّ The hellfire is true. وَالنَّبِيُّونَ حَقِّ The prophets are true. وَالسَّاعَةُ حَقِّ Day of judgment is true. اللَّهُمَّ لَكَ أَسْلَمْتْ He would say, O oh Allah, to you I have submitted. وَبِكَ آمَنْتْ And in you I have believed. وَعَلَيْكَ تَوَكَّلْتْ Upon you I have placed my trust. وَبِكَ خَاصَمْتْ And in you I debate. وَإِلَيْكَ حَاكَمْتْ And in you I take my judge. فَاغْفِرْ لِي مَا قَدَّمْتُ وَمَا أَخَّرْتْ So forgive my past and future sins. وَمَا أَسْرَرْتُ وَمَا أَعْلَنْتْ My public and my private ones. أَنْتَ الْمُقَدِّمُ وَأَنْتَ الْمُؤَخِّرُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا أَنْتْ You are the one who pushes some forward. And you are the one who holds some people back. No one is to be worshipped but you. Is the life of the one who knows Allah and worships Him like the one who does not? The pure and the impure, Allah says, they are not the same. Though you may be impressed by the size of the impure. Now the Muslim may be outvoted and outnumbered, but he is not the same as others. Line of comparison number two, an income that is made from halal and money that is made from haram. Are they the same? Well, look at the outcome of both and we will know the answer. One may offer Allah Jalla Jalaluhu an earth's full of money as charity that he had given to the needy in dunya and Allah may reject it on Yawm Al Qiyamah. Why? Because it was made from haram sources of income. And another person may offer Allah Jalla Jalaluhu a date and it will be accepted by Allah. Why? Because it was sourced from the halal income. They are not the same. And that is why Bukhari and Muslim narrate on the authority of Abu Huraira that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, whoever gives a date in charity from income that is tayyib, that is pure and halal, and Allah only accepts what is pure and halal, Allah takes that charity with his right hand and Allah will nurture this charity. This small sadaqah, Allah will rear it, foster it, till it becomes like a mountain because that was a sadaqah that came from a halal source of income. Look at the barakah. What about the haram money? or the places of doubt. Abdul Mas'ud narrates that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, even if riba interest is abundant, the outcome will always be a loss. 
So yes, I agree. A person who makes money from haram may wear the finest clothes and may drive the finest cars and may occupy the most spacious of houses and may live the most luxurious of lives. But guess what? If it's made from haram, his dua is under threat. His sadaqa charity is under threat. His zakah is under threat. His peace of mind is under threat. His afiyah well-being is under threat. The well-being of his family is under threat. And his safety underground when he goes six feet under in the grave is under threat. Is halal money the same as haram? لا يستوي الخبيث والطيب. The impure and pure are not the same. ولو أعجبك كثرة الخبيث. Even though you may be impressed by the size of the impure. The third line of comparison is a boyfriend-girlfriend relationship versus a relationship in marriage. Are they the same? Well, consider the former, a brother, a sister who pursues a covert, clandestine relationship under the guise of night. Apparently nobody can see them and the fear and the guilt consumes them. Then they meet and perhaps they spend an evening in haram with one another. And it is excruciating. Why? Because they remember that Allah Jalla Jalaluhu said, Wala taqrabu zina, don't go near fornication. Innahu kana fahisha. It is an abomination. Wasa a sabila and a very evil way to go. And they remember that the people who fornicate will be in ovens in their graves. That's before the day of judgment. So regret is consuming them during that moment. There is very little pleasure in it. Then should somebody knock on their door when they're in that act, they pounce in fear because they know that they are guilty. They are in the wrong. And then should she become pregnant, the gloom and misery is compounded. And should she deliver the child, the gloom and misery is compounded. Or should they kill the child, abortion, the gloom and misery is compounded. Is this the same as a brother or sister who patiently waits for marriage and restrains their hunger and their desire for the opposite gender through salah? They manage it through dhikr, through Quran, through good companionship, through time in the masjid, through lowering of the games, through fasting for them to get married in the halal. And there is a walima, a wedding, and everyone is invited and everyone is happy. It's in the public. Ya salam. Then that evening, should they spend moments of intimacy with one another? Their hearts are at peace. Why? Because there is charity when you are with your spouse in the halal. Allahu Akbar. Then should someone knock on their door when they are in that moment? They're not afraid. They can respond. They can leave the door closed because they're not in the wrong. Then should she become pregnant? The happiness is compounded. Should she deliver? There is a aqiqa. The happiness is compounded. Are they the same? لا يستوي الخبيث والطيب ولو أعجبك كثرة الخبيث The pure and the impure. They are not equal. Even though you may be impressed by the size of that which is impure. The fourth and final line of comparison. A life of sin and pursuing your desire and a life of tawbah repentance. Are they the same? Our predecessors, Ibrahim ibn Adham and others would say, if the kings and the sons of the kings, they would to learn of the happiness that we're living in this dunya as practicing Muslims, they would fight us over this happiness with their souls. Is this life like the one whom Allah Almighty said about him, وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِي فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ضَنْكَ The one who turns away from my remembrance, we will give them a life of misery and hardship. Allah says, وَنَحْشُرُهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ أَعْمَى And we will bring him up on the day of judgment without vision, blind. Sulaiman al-Taymi, he would say about the sinner, may Allah forgive us. A person may commit a sin in privacy. But by day and in public, the disgrace of that sin can be seen on his face. Are these lives the same? Allah asks to those who commit sins, think that we're going to make them like the people of Iman and they do good deeds, whether during their life or when they are dying, do they think they're going to be the same? How evil is their judgment, Allah says. So these were four lines of comparison I wanted to share with you, my brother, my sister, to show you examples of how this ayah, this principle of an ayah is to be used in our lives. Use it now yourself and measure everything else that comes your way using it. So for example, money, a business opportunity comes your way. If you have understood this principle, you will no longer just ask how much are the returns. No, you will now ask 
how pure are the returns? Because al khabith and the tayyib, they're not equal. When speaking about friends, you will no longer be obsessed with having a huge following on social media anymore. It's no longer about how many friends I have. The question now becomes, who from the many should be my friend? Well, now you are looking at what you should wear before you leave your house, my dear sister, with respect to a hijab. You will no longer ask, what's trending? What does society expect from me? No, you will ask, what is required of me? What does Allah want from me? Because the pure and the impure, they're not equal, even though you may be impressed by the size of the impure. And Allah, Jalla Jalaluhu is shakur. He is appreciative. He gives thanks. He is grateful. Meaning, if you live a life where you are always choosing the tayyib, the pure, even though you have to make some sacrifices, Allah will fill your hands three times. The first time He will fill your hand is in dunya. He said, Man amila salihan min dhakarin aw untha. Whoever works good deeds, whether male or female, wa huwa mu'min, whilst being a believer, فَلَنُحْيِيَنَّهُ حَيَاةً طَيِّبًا will give them a good life, a tayyib life, a happy wholesome life. Because you chose what is tayyib, so Allah gives you a life that is tayyib. He will fill your hands a second time. And that is when your soul is leaving your body. That terrifying moment, Allah said, الَّذِينَ تَتَوَفَّاهُمُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ طَيِّبِينَ They are those whom the angels claim their souls in a tayyib, pure, good state. The angels will reassure them, سَلَامٌ عَلَيْكُمْ Peace be upon you, you're safe. Enter paradise because of what you used to do. And the third time he will fill your hands is on the day of judgment. What happens there for the people who chose the tayyib even though they had to make sacrifices? Allah said, Allah has promised the believing men and the believing women gardens beneath which rivers are flowing. وَمَسَاكِنَ طَيِّبَةً And mansions that are طَيِّبَةً Mansions that are lofty Mansions that are pure and wholesome and rich فِي جَنَّاتِ عَدٍ In gardens of perpetual residence وَرِضْوَانٌ مِّنَ اللَّهِ أَكْبَرٍ But the pleasure of Allah is greater than all of this ذَلِكَ هُوَ الْفَوْزُ الْعَظِيمُ That is the supreme success